probability. It is the chance of occurrence of an event. It all started in 18th century to solve the problems of gamblers. There were two scientists, Pascal and Fermat, who built some theory to solve the problems related to gambling. Like, what is the chance of getting a, a specific number when you throw a die? Or what is the chance of getting a specific card from a pack of cards? And so on. So while they started building the theory of probability, there were two assumptions they have made. The first assumption is the number of trials is finite. Like when we throw a die, the only possible outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Similarly, when you toss a coin, it's either head or tail. So whatever is the event, you have some definite limited number of trials. That was the first assumption. The second was the elementary events which happen, like when you throw a die, the chance of getting a head or chance of getting a tail. These small, small events are equally likely. The chance of getting one is equivalent to the chance of getting the other one. So using these assumptions, they have built the theory of probability. Right now, what we're going to discuss is called the classical probability, which says that if we have a random experiment, which can produce some n outcomes for the elementary events, and if we pick up one of the event from the random experiment, which has some maybe m favorable outcomes, with this we can define probability as it is the number of favorable outcomes m upon the total possible outcomes that's n let's take few examples to understand this here's the question what is the probability of getting two heads and tossing two coins here the possible outcomes are either head head or head tail tail head tail and tail the total possible outcomes n is 4 and the favorable outcome is getting two heads so m is 1 and now using the definition we can say p is favorable outcomes by total outcomes which is 1 by 4 that's how we calculate the probability now because of the initial assumptions this classical definition cannot be applied to many events because events are not always finite and they may not be equally likely also therefore to address these issues scientists have extended the classical definition and we call this extension as axiomatic approach. Axiomatic approach is basically an extension to the classical definition and here we talk about sets and functions. So before we formulate it, let me demonstrate this with an example. Let's take the random experiment tossing a coin. Now when we toss the coin, the sample space is either head or tail. And for this experiment, any event we define, it should be basically a subset of the sample space. Events could be like uh, getting a head, then I might say it is H or getting a tail or getting head or tail. And one more possibility, getting nothing. And at a closer look, you can see these are the subsets of the sample space. And this set, the set of all subsets, is basically the power set of the sample space. Isn't it? Yep. So for any sample space, these are the only possible elementary events. And each event has a certain probability, right? Like for head, getting a head, the probability is half because head is one possibility out of two possibilities, that is head or tail. Similar tail also has a probability one by two. Getting a head or tail, 100% event. So one, getting nothing means zero. So every event can be tagged with a probability, which is a real number. Now, if I take this as my domain, which is the power set of S, and if I take the real numbers as my codomain, we can map each of the possible elementary events with a real number. And this mapping of the events with real numbers is called the probability function. Now, what exactly this probability function is and how we're going to use it, this we'll be discussing a little more detail in distributions. For now, just focus on few points. If you carefully observe, none of the probabilities are negative. This becomes the first axiom. The first is the axiom of positivity, which says that every elementary event has a probability greater than or equal to zero. The second one is the axiom of certainty, which says that one of the elementary event must lead to a probability one, which will be a sure shot event, which actually is the probability of the sample space. It conveys that event must lead to a answer. There should not be any ambiguity. And the third one, the axiom of unions, which says that if two elementary events, A and B, if they're exclusive, then the probability of union of A and B is probability of A 
plus probability of B. Now this viewpoint of probability gives little more flexibility in solving many questions because we are thinking probability in terms of sets and each value of the probability as a function. And if you have noticed, nowhere we have mentioned that the events have to be finite. So this can be applied for infinite events. And secondly, this can be applied to any events. They need not be equally likely. Now let's take a few examples to understand the application of probability. Here we have a question. In throwing a pair of die, find the probability of getting a total of 8. For a pair of dice, the sample space would be 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3 and so on. So the total possible outcomes are 36. And here the event is getting a total of 8. That is, the sum of the outcomes is 8. Therefore, these are the possible outcomes. 2, 6, 3, 5, 4, 4, 5, 3, 6, 2. In each of these cases, the sum of the 2 is 8. And these are 5 outcomes. So the probability is the favorable outcomes by total number of outcomes, which becomes 5 by 36. Here we have another question. A bag contains 4 white, 3 red and 2 blue balls. And a ball is drawn at random. Find the probability of the event. A. The ball drawn is white or red. B. The ball drawn is white as well as red. To solve this, first let's write the sample space. So here we have 4 white balls, 3 red balls and 2 blue balls. So the sample space has 9 balls. And the event in the first bit is the ball drawn is white or red. Here or can be thought as union. Therefore we can say the probability of the event is probability of white union or red. And getting a white or red, these are mutually exclusive. Therefore, we could write this as probability of white plus probability of red. That is, getting a white is 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 possibilities out of 9 balls. And probability of red is 1, 2, 3. 3 possibilities out of 9. So, together it becomes 7 by 9. The second event is the ball drawn is white as well as red. That's white and red. Here the probability can be thought as probability of white intersection red. And you can clearly see there is no ball which is both white as well as red. Therefore, this is 0. Here we have a question asked in gate 2011 computer science. A deck of 5 cards, each carrying a distinct number from 1 to 5, is shuffled thoroughly. 2 cards are then removed, one at a time. What is the probability that the two cards selected with the first number being one higher than the second. To solve this, first let's define the sample space. The cards are removed one after the other. So the first card can be taken in five different ways. Now once we pick up the first one, we are left with four cards and we can pick up the next card in four ways. That's 20 ways. And the sample space looks like this. Now let's define the event. The event is uh, the two cards selected the first number being one higher than the second. One higher is the difference between the two numbers should be only one. Now, if we manually list the possibilities, we have only four possibilities. From this, we can get the probability as P is number of favorable outcomes by total outcomes. That is four by 20, that's one by five. 